What is going on everyone? Welcome to a Tales of Arise video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an accessory crafting guide for those that maybe don't know what the crafting is, or maybe you guys want to know what skills to find, or maybe you're just farming and don't know exactly what to look for. Uh, hopefully this video will help you guys out. But before that, I do want to say that I've already beaten the game and if you don't want to be spoiled by you know the accessories that you can craft or maybe the party members that i have this is your warning so take that as you please so with that out of the way let's go ahead and get into the video so crafting accessories when you you first get a access to this pretty early in the game um i don't remember exactly what point but you do get access to it at the very beginning I wouldn't mess around with the crafting too much just because that you don't really get access to a lot of things uh, and they aren't going to make that big of a difference for you at the very beginning. Um, I will say that these, the fire, water damage, uh, wind, earth damage, light, dark damage, these accessories just for having that minus 50% damage taken, um, that's actually pretty good. Because I've used, I've made these accessories just for this, for specific bosses that, you know, deal those type of elements. And it helped with my survivability on all of my party members. Because that was, you know, that's a lot of bang for your buck. 50% uh, damage mitigation is really nice. So with crafting accessories, you go around the maps uh, collecting nodes. Let's uh, look over here. So, for instance, you know, you're, you're roaming the areas and you see these little stones. So, as you explore the areas, you'll get access to more of these. And then as you progress through the story, you'll get access to even more rarities. And as you make your way through the game, the rarity of previous areas nodes, they also go up. So, for instance, let's say at the very beginning, we have only access to rarity one or two at the most in this one particular area. Let's say we make it all the way to the end of the game or we beat the game. And then if you go back to the same area, the rarities now can go all the way up until five. <clears throat> it goes one, two, three, four and five. So what does that mean? So with the rarities of the uh, materials that you obtain, it'll determine how many skills that particular accessories can get. So for instance, at rank five, you have four skills. At rank four, you have three. At rank three, you have two. At rank two, you have one. And then at rank one, you don't have any skills. You just have the main skill. So that's pretty much about um, what it is on the rarities. Again, it goes one through five. Five has four skills, four has three skills, three has two skills, two has one skill, and one has none. Now, with there are a lot of skills that you can find on the um, rocks themselves. And there, so for instance, dark damage plus 15%, down damage plus 10%, coup de grace. Now, if you wanted to see what the skills do, like for instance, that coup de gras, um, increases damage dealt from arts that consume all arts by 15%. Now, it may you <clears throat> you can stack these. So, for instance, you can have four uh, dark damage plus fifteen to get a total of sixty percent more dark damage. Um, now, the way to do that is you there's enhancing accessories and then there's transfer skill. Now, you can transfer a skill of a maxed out um, accessory. So, for instance, let's let's craft um, just as an example. Let's craft uh, this one. Okay. So then we go into uh, enhance and these don't really, they don't give you any bonus points. Like for instance, the resistance doesn't go up. The um, recovery speed doesn't go up. The attack doesn't go up. All this is, is you level up the accessory because it's a requirement in order for you to transfer a skill. So for instance, let's say we want to put a skill on this. So now it'll bring up the accessories that we've max enhanced and it'll give us the option of transferring one of these. Now you can only transfer one skill and once you transfer that skill, that accessory is done. Like it's used, you can't use it anymore. So you level up the accessory, you choose the skill that you want to transfer and then 
you know, whatever, whatever slot you want to do. And then once you use that, that accessory is gone. You, you have to make another one. So with that in mind, I recommend enhancing uh, rank four or may maybe even three just because it requires a lot less enhancements. So all the RNG pretty much in this game is just going to be, uh, you know, going from node to node, seeing if you can find that one particular skill that you want. Like, I don't know, that's an increased aggro. Makes enemies much more likely to target you. Why, why would you want this? Well, we do have a tank in the game. As you all know, her name is uh, Kisara. So, Kisa someone like Kisara would appreciate that just because, you know, she she's a tank. Her, her job is to tank. So, if she gets all the aggro, then, you know, that's she's doing her job. So, there are a bunch of accessories that have really good um, main skills. Like, for instance, this one, Revival Chance. 50% chance to revive when KO'd in battle. Uh, casting Time, minus 20%. That's good. It could help you out with, you know, uh, Rinwill who casts um, magic or we have uh, Shion and the other guy who can cast healing. So this will help with them, you know, healing faster and more often. Uh, there are half AG, 50% chance to have an arts um, cost. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there are a lot of pretty interesting and rare. Like for instance, this one has cast time. So you can stack all of these and have a total of a 40% reduction in casting time. Uh, there is rare rare drop rate up small and then there's also rare drop rate up large. So let's say as you can see right here, rare drop rate up large. There's charge rate plus 4%. Um, this isn't that complicated, but I felt like maybe people, you know, didn't know about it or didn't know exactly what to do. Uh, for instance, alertness temporarily increases critical hit rate by 5% on successful perfect evades and perfect guards. So maybe if you use um, Al or if you main um, Kisara, this would be good. Increases, you know, critical rate after you guard or if you if you evade. There's also CP cost. So this, you know, if you stack four of these, that's a 40% reduction in your CP cost. So something, you know that costs 80 CP to heal the whole party will now cost almost half. So it's pretty good. Uh, again, the whole RNG in this game is pretty much going to be just finding those perfect uh, skills that you want to put on your units. Uh, the main skill, the main skills, uh, there's, you know, attack plus 15%, elemental plus 15%, penetration plus 30%, resistance, heal HP on enemy defeat, Recover 1 CP on enemy defeat. Uh, stat boost on enemy defeat. I have not made this one, so I'm not, exa I'm not exactly sure how much of a boost this is. But I imagine this would work on um, mobs. Like a whole group of mobs that you are fighting as you can get more uh, buffs. There's an item drop rate. Movement speed. This one's actually pretty useful. There's elemental damage minus 20%. Physical damage minus 20%. Penetration plus 80% and then your resistance drops by 80%. So it's a, a double-edged sword right there uh, Again, art CP cost, you know, so again, it's it's not that complicated, but it's 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 relatively easy to mix and match what you want your units to do Like on my um, Shion I have her the casting speed or the casting time uh Warrior Emblem increases damage dealt by 5% for each enemy on the field. So this one's actually pretty great because, you know, again, if you're fighting a horde of mobs, let's say you got four of them and these stack. So if you have all, you know, all four of these are glutton for a battle. It's 5, 10, 15, 20, 20% 20 per enemy. And if you have four enemies, that's an 80% increase in your damage. So it's a pretty big boost. Um... This is pretty, for me, this is a pretty high dollar skill. Uh, I am still looking for another one to put on this one. Uh, the rare drop rate of large is nice, but I don't think it's really that needed. At least not for me anymore. Um, so again, this, 
Accessory crafting isn't that complicated, but I felt like I just wanted to share my two cents on, you know, how to how it could be put to use. Again, you start off with low rarity nodes when you first start the game. As you progress through the game and when you beat the game, uh, you then unlock more rarities in the previous areas so you can have more access to those rare skills. Now, again, when it comes to enhancing accessories, I would recommend to enhance the rank 3 and then the rank 4 at the highest. I, I wouldn't recommend um, enhancing these just for one skill. The rank 5s are primarily used just because they have 4 skills. And then all you do is, you know, you look for those rank 3 and rank 4 uh, access or materials to make those accessories that have those particular skills you want because it's cheaper to enhance those than it is the rank five and then that way you can just transfer you know skills relatively easily so i think that pretty much sums it up um i don't know if i missed anything if i did you know leave a comment and i'll reply as soon as i can but all in all the accessory crafting isn't that complicated it's pretty simple but i just thought i'd make a video so hope that helped you guys out um if it did let me know if it didn't let me know why not but i appreciate you guys dropping by this was my first tales of game and i i like it a lot i want to 100 percent it i'm on i'm in the process of 100 percenting it so uh yeah if there's any more videos that you guys would like me to make let me know but as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys next time.